Let's learn a new programming language, the logic language. The logic language was invented for this course. So you're not learning anything that gets used out there in the world, but it is extremely closely related to a commonly used language called Prolog, which was created in the 70s and still has wide support today. It's perhaps the second most popular declarative language after SQL. But the reason why we're not using regular Prolog is that we want to keep the implementation of the logic language as small as possible so that it's easy to understand. So we're going to base the syntax of the logic language on our scheme project. So we can reuse all of the parsing and evaluation routines that we've already created there. So expressions are going to be facts and queries in this language. Facts state what you know. Queries look up new information based on what you know. And these contain relations. Expressions and their relations are just scheme lists which contain scheme symbols. So for example, we'll have something like likes John dogs. This is a scheme list, but it's also a relation in the logic language that tells me that John likes dogs. So a typical way to state a relation is to describe how some things are related first, and then write down the symbols that are related and the order does matter. Dogs may also like John, but that's a separate fact not stated here. Now, the implementation of the logic language does fit on a single sheet of paper, which we'll look at next lecture, which means that we can understand it quite straightforwardly if we understand how the scheme interpreter works, because the logic language is also interpreted. Okay, so today we're going to talk about how the logic language works, how we write programs in it. Next time, We'll talk about how it's interpreted, and we need some kind of theme for examples for today, so we're going to use dogs, because John likes dogs, or in the logic language, likes John dogs. My dog looks kind of like that. Okay, here are the pieces of the logic language. We'll start with simple facts. A simple fact expression is in the logic language declares a relation to be true. Let's say I want to track the heredity of a pack of dogs. This is what we're going to do for the whole lecture. Then in the language, I write down a relation as a scheme list, and I write down a fact expression as a scheme list of relations. So we could have just one relation in the fact expression. I could say that there is a parent relation between Delano and Herbert. So we're going to keep track conceptually of all the facts that we've created so far. Um, we can also say that the parent relationship exists also between the dogs Abraham and Barack. Notice that I've chosen to name all of my dogs after U.S. presidents. Um, another parent relation says that there's a parent relationship between Abraham and Clinton, and so we could have a structure that we're building here which, as you can see, when we add in Fillmore and Grover and Eisenhower, forms a tree structure. Okay, so this is the logic prompt. Here are the expressions. I actually write out fact and then whatever fact I'm trying to state. And it just remembers all the facts that I've created so far. So incrementally, we've built up a representation of this hereditary tree for all of my presidential dogs. Now, relations are not procedure calls. This is not scheme. It's a new language. In logic, a relation is not a call expression. So remember how call expressions work. I'm sure you do. You write things like abs negative three, and that calls the absolute value computational procedure on negative three to give you back three. But we're not going to do this anymore. Instead, in logic, you just state facts. You state there's an abs relationship between negative three and three. That is, the absolute value of negative 3 is 3. So you write down facts that look like this, and it's up to the interpreter to figure out how to process them. In order to assert that 1 plus 2 is 3, we'd write down a relation. If I add 1 and 2, I'll get 3. 
Now, what's the point of stating things in this way? Well, it means we can ask the logic interpreter to complete partial relations based on the known facts. So let's say that my known fact was add one, two, three. Then I could ask the interpreter, what is it that I would put in here such that add something to three would be true? Now, if I know this fact, it can tell me that the answer is one. And it can also tell me that what would I add here in order to complete this relation and it would be two, or it can actually do addition by leaving out the final solution and providing the two add and an augend and letting it figure out the sum. It can even tell us what relations exist between three numbers. So what is it that relates one, two, and three? Well, one option is that they first two add to form the, the third. So this is a different style of programming. We state relations which include both the inputs and the outputs of something that you'd think of as a procedure in another language. And when we have both the inputs and outputs stated all in one relation, we can ask the logic interpreter to go either forwards or backwards from one and two to three or from one and three back to two, or even tell us how things are related.